welcome we were discussing about our last topic that is synchronous machines uh, let us see how far can we go uh, you recall that uh, a synchronous machine uh, has a balanced three phase winding uh, generally on the stator synchronous machine uh, made generally of large powers power in the range of megawatts so 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 the stator winding uh, is a balanced three phase winding just like that of the stator of a three phase induction motor there is not much of a difference but on the rotor you have got a winding uh, which uh, uh, gives you I, I mean dc dc current you pass and uh, suppose you connect this to a dc source dc source of course uh, this will be a rotating member so it must be through clipping and brushes then connect it to dc source and pass dc current this is called field current so this current is dc and uh, suppose this is cross cross this is dot dot so it will become a sort of magnet and uh, it will be rotating like this. So, this is called the field winding okay. and uh, I will be just uh, drawing this as I told you like this uh, field winding is there some DC current is passed I f and this is rotor it can rotate. Now, if you rotate such a field then uh, these coils on the stator will become feet of EMF because flux linking with the coil is going to change and uh, if you call this is machine F uh, then if it is rotating this way uh, this must be your B phase and this must be your C phase to give you ABC phase sequence voltage this coil must belong to because whatever is happening to a phase now after 120 degree electrical same thing is going to happen. So, the numbering is important this is V m this is C m and then uh, uh, this induced voltage uh, uh, the number of transfer phase I know flux per pole I know therefore, the R m s value of the induced voltage in each phase that expression is also known standard root 2 pi f phi k w n where phi is the flux per pole. Now, uh, so this becomes a source of induced voltage here if you wish you can use that power whatever voltage is generated you can connect a three phase load and you can deliver power to the load. However, a synchronous machine operation uh, uh, that is called isolated uh, operation of a synchronous generator connected that is locally the generator is there you connect a local load that is all. But I will uh, we will much more uh, important is to study what happens if this machine becomes a member of your infinite bus. So, bus terminals are um, I do not know I named like that A B C B and uh, or source I think I named A S B C S and this is source side and B S last class most probably I named like that or it can be. So, the, the, this is this existing supply existing bus where the voltage is maintained voltage and frequency you cannot change it it is decided by so many generators connected in parallel uh, beyond these terminals. So, that that is called a bus infinite bus strictly speaking is one where the this voltage remains always constant and the frequency remains constant. Now, what is done this synchronous machine is connected to the bus the moment it gets connected to the bus 
you can understand that the terminal voltage of the machine becomes same as the terminal voltage existing in the bus, machine terminal voltage I am talking about. So, machine terminal voltage gets fixed by this one, nothing I mean I will not be once these are connected here, you change the field current whatever you do, but this terminal voltage is going to remain same that you will not be able to alter. So, that is one of the boundary condition, but the big question I was discussing last time is how to uh, connect these three terminals to the bus. That is I want to parallel this uh, machine with the existing bus voltage system. So, what you have to do you have to take a triple pole switch and then what you do you connect some lamps ok. Uh, this let me go first last time we discussed and uh, across the lamps uh, there will be switches which will be in open condition initially ok. and these are gang operated together they will operate. So, <coughs> with this switch which is called synchronizing switch, you have to synchronize this incoming machine with the bus synchronizing switch, synchronizing switch and this is ordinary triple pole switch. Now, what you do with this synchronizing switch in off condition, you close this switch after ensuring that this line to line voltage is same as this line to line voltage. With this open I know the field current if you change this voltage magnitude will be proportional to this field current I will be able to adjust. Suppose, this bus voltage is 440 volt I will increase this field current most probably by a field resistance. Okay. and uh, vary this rheostat position field current you increase flux per pole will be created voltage you will get and and uh, adjust uh, that field current. So, that line to line voltage becomes this voltage. What about the frequency? Okay, whatever is the frequency of the bus based on that if you know the number of poles it is presumed you are running the machine at that speed. So, that same frequency voltage is induced you can parallel two sources of AC voltages provided their line to line voltages are same as well as the frequencies are same no point in attempting to parallel a 50 hertz voltage source with a 25 hertz voltage source it has got no meaning in fact there will be uh, 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 difficult situations because the voltages will not match, frequencies are different, they are rotating at different speeds. So, there may be large circulating current and this is out of question. Therefore, uh, whatever if this frequency is 50 hertz, um, then I, uh, I am running this machine, this uh, rotor I am run, running it at that synchronous speed. So, that 50 hertz is also generated here. Now, if you connect these three lamps L 1, L 2, L 3 <coughs> and if the line to line voltages are same on both the supply side and also of the machine. Mind you these two voltages are not still connected between them there is a high resistance incandescent lamps you have connected. So, they are not shorted yet, but how the lamps will then glow now if this neutral uh, and if this is the supply neutral N s let us imagine they are also connected like that then what happens is this this these three are bus voltages A s B s 
C s, you must ensure phase sequences are same and C s. Then the machine voltages will be A m, B m, C m and this is the supply neutral, this is the neutral which is N s and if you have connected it like this, N s is same as N m, machine neutral, N s, N m, they are same. And then uh, the if if the switch is closed, so the, the, this set of phasor is rotating with a speed of omega which is equal to 2 pi n s and similarly, this machine voltages uh, let us use green color eh? a s b s they are also balance system c s they are also rotating at a speed omega 2 pi n s. Then the question is what is the voltage across the lamp? Voltage across the lamp L 1 will be this length L 1. Similarly, voltage across the lamp 2, uh, lamp 2 is suppose this one, let us call lamp 2, this is lamp 3. So, voltage across B phase will be this voltage and this is voltage across this lamp. So, uh, if I indicate the lamp here also to understand what is the voltage across the lamp that will decide how it will glow and we observe that if both of them are moving at synchronous speed exact speeds are same of the supply frequency at the same frequency the rotor is running. Then as time passes this lamp voltages will be fixed and it will glow, glow uh, with equal brightness, whatever is the brightness. Now, the crucial point is when you are closing the switch, I do not know. Maybe A s, B s, C s was here and this green, uh, uh, I think this, these are machine, A m, these are machine, A m, B m and C m. So, um, I am not sure when you close this switch lamps may, may be will glow with equal brightness is certain, but at what brightness it will glow it is not clear it may be even dark all the lamps because uh, uh, you, you are lucky enough to close this switch that A s A m B s B m and C s C m they overlap, then the voltage across the lamps will be 0. So, there are so many possibilities, it may be very bright if uh, it may so happen that your A s B s C s supply voltages are like this and uh, your machine voltages are just opposite <laughs> A s B s and C s. Then the voltage across the lamp will be twice the phase voltages, it will be very bright with highest brightness it will glow. Anyway, when we say that I am going to parallel this, I have to close this rate switch, so that the lamps will be bypassed and then A m will be truly connected to A s, B m uh, C m will be truly connected to C s and B m will be connected to B s and then I will say I have successfully paralleled this alternator with the bus. It is quite obvious to, to demand that you are allowed to close this switch only when all the lamps are dark, then you are sure that these two sets of EMF are overlapping and there is no voltage existing between these two points. Therefore, no question of any kind of short circuiting you are doing, no circulating current etcetera. I think this point is clear. Therefore, I am allowed to close this switch if all the lamps are dark that is the situation should be like this.
they must overlap that will be the most uh, favorable point of uh, instant of closing these switches that is the whole idea but as i have seen if these two frequencies are exactly same <laughs> there are so many options uh, of uh, brightness it may be anything it may be all bright all dark or any sort of brightness and that brightness will be maintained. Therefore, to initiate synchronism what you have to do is this, this the frequency of the generated uh, voltages across the machine terminals make a slight difference with respect to this frequency that is the crucial point that is I will uh, run this uh, rotor of this machine if it is 50 hertz perhaps I will adjust the speed of the prime mover who is driving this machine to such a speed that it is uh, if it is a 4 pole machine it is suppose 1495 rpm are you getting suppose if it is a 4 pole machine then at what speed you have to run it to generate 50 hertz at 1500 rpm. But what I will do it I will not run exactly at 1500 rpm but at a speed which is slightly different from this synchronous speed say at 1490 rpm. If you do like that then you see what is going to happen. <coughs> then the bus voltages. So, the conclusion is run the rotor of the incoming machine, incoming machine, incoming synchronous machine. at a speed very close to synchronous very close to its synchronous speed speed, but not exactly equal to synchronous speed, but not exactly I mean I am over emphasizing this uh, not exactly equal to synchronous speed. Example, if p is equal to 4 of the machine f is equal to 50 hertz you want to generate I am telling do not generate 50 hertz what you do you run the machine. So, synchronous speed is 1500 rpm. Now, your prime mover with the help of prime mover you may run the machine better run it say run it at say 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 1495 rpm. So, frequency will be close to 50 hertz, but not exactly 50 hertz. Then what is uh, this phasor going to do? This is a s supply phasors, they are moving with synchronous speed. Then this, this green phasors, it is now moving at a speed which is lower than this omega is not 2 f by p it is not equal to 2 f by p. So, what will happen? It will happen then. So, it is moving with a speed omega s omega s and it is uh, moving with a speed 
omega r omega r is very close to omega s. So, so your this rotor uh, the incoming machine voltages phasor it will be moving with a speed omega r. or I can say that the bus voltage phasors then then what is a bus voltage phasor therefore, if you imagine that A s B s C s are fixed then this green phasors will be moving with a relative speed omega s difference omega if omega r is greater than omega s then this green phasors will be moving in the clockwise direction and if it is omega r is less than omega s this set of phasors will be moving with a speed omega r minus omega s that clear. So, that is the way it will be therefore, what I will do I will pretend that this a s b s c s are fixed and this this phasor if omega r is less than omega s then I, is it moving like this with respect to this or anti clockwise direction are you getting that is if you freeze a s with respect to a s b s c s this green phasors will be moving with the relative speed either in the clockwise or in the anti clockwise direction. So, omega is, is greater therefore, with respect to this it will be moving this way hmm. positive uh, this this one is it uh, sitting here it will see that it is moving in the relative speed either uh, uh, omega s is greater. Uh, so, it will move in this direction, but at a very low speed 5 r p m if it is 1500 r p m if it is 1490 r 5 r p m. In that case I have created a situation this is lamp 1 this is lamp 2 and this is lamp 3 voltages. Therefore, as it moves the voltage across the lamp will change very slowly which my eye can distinguish. See if you connect an incandescent lamp in a 220 volt 50 hertz supply. Uh, there you will not find although the voltage applied sometimes is 0 sometimes is maximum that, but nonetheless uh, the current is changing from 0 to positive maximum and negative maximum, but brightness does not change uh, my eye at least will not feel that current 0 thing. But imagine that same bulb is supplied from a very low frequency AC source, then you will find the lamp is brightening slowly and then once again darkening slowly your eye will be able to follow because of persistence of vision is not at a very high frequency. Therefore, this lamps now you can easily see will increase its brightness it will become maximum when these are opposite here f s f s f s machines these are opposite these are a machine b machine and c machine and sometimes it will be 0 also. <coughs> Therefore, frequencies I have not uh, made exactly equal then there is difficulty uh, I do not know uh, one should be very lucky to have that all dark that probability is very less. Therefore, you must create artificially to understand when these phasors will be overlapping. It is at that time 
when these two feathers will overlap there will be instance when all the lamps will be dark you close this switch. Now, uh, there is interesting thing uh, the frequencies were not exactly equal, but what they say the machine will be pulled into synchronism that that speed deficiency what were was there 5 rpm or 10 rpm that will be if the machine will be locked into synchronism that is the term. However, this you cannot do when the machine is stationary <laughs> are you getting. So, these are very interesting finer points to understand what that synchronization of an incoming machine is there. The point is when all the lamps are dark I will close this then this rotor speed of this machine which was slightly different from the synchronous speed will be synchronous speed itself and the machine will be pulled into synchronism. After that after these lamps are bypassed the switch is closed AS AM C M C S B M B S they are all same points and the frequency of the currents if any flowing that will be of the supply frequency. Supply frequency will now decide what it is, is the speed of the machine. Machine will be this this term is important when all the lamps are dark when all the lamps are dark lamps are dark close the synchronizing switch synchronizing switch and uh, the incoming machine and the incoming machine will be pulled into synchronism will be pulled into synchronism. After synchronization after synchronization rotor speed rotor speed of the incoming machine of the incoming machine will be the synchronous speed will be the synchronous that is all. Now, there are other methods uh, uh, I will not uh, go into that if you have understood this there is uh, another method of lamp connection which is called uh, two bright lamp method of synchronizing a incoming alternator or synchronous machine with the bus. Now, after uh, so those things you will be able to understood of course, I have included those things in my lab including what is the voltage across the what will be the nature of the voltage waveform across the lamps uh, those things I have done there uh, this much is needed in order to further advance into this course that is I will be dealing with synchronous machines which are connected to the bus. Now, the question is what do I mean by a synchronous machine connected to the bus that is what I have explained. Now, uh, in my subsequent lectures I will assume that this synchronous machine uh, has been synchronized by somebody earlier and it is connected to bus that means, this terminal voltages are same as the bus voltages we will continue with.